This geography revision video is about coastal processes. So for an E to D grade, you need to be able to identify and describe key terms relevant to the coast topic. For a B to C, you need to be able to produce diagrams explaining what's happening. And for an A to A star grade, you need to use key vocabulary to explain every single process through annotated diagrams. So the first thing we need to know is what waves are. Well, waves are caused by the wind dragging over the surface of the water. The length of water that the wind blows over is called the fetch. So the stronger the wind is and the longer it blows for, the longer the fetch will be, and consequently the larger the wave will be. So if you think about the stretch of Atlantic Ocean between the USA and the UK, it's got a, there's a large expanse of water there where the wind has got time to pick up and the um, waves have got chance to get bigger, whereas the water between France and um, England with, with the English Channel is much shorter, so we'd imagine the waves to be um, not quite as powerful and a little bit lower. When the waves move up towards the coastline, this is called the swash, and when they move back down into the sea, that's called the backwash. If a wave has got more swash than backwash, it's a constructive wave, which means it's building up the beach and it's likely to be depositing quite a lot of material. However, if it's got more backwash than swash, it's going to be destroying the beach. It's going to start to it's a destructive wave, so it will start to take material away in the form of erosion. There are four processes of coastal erosion. These are exactly the same as the process of erosion that you need to know for your rivers topic as well. So the first we have here is hydraulic action. That's when the water gets into cracks in the rock and helps to break it up. Um, abrasion is when the sand and pebbles in the sea hit against the coast, the cliff. Attrition is when the um, small rocks in the sea start to hit against each, hit against each other and become um, smoother and smaller. And finally, the very small materials, the sol soluble material from the rock, um, is dissolved and this is called solution. So there are different types of erosional landforms caused by these processes of erosion. You can see here that we've got a headland which is the hard resistant rock like limestone or granite sticking out into the sea. That's because it takes a really long time for this to be worn away, it's not done so very easily. Um, however, you can see in front of that headland that we've got an area of softer rock which has been eroded much more easily and that's called a bay. This is a diagram that you could potentially use in an exam. So you can see on the left hand side that first of all the coastline was straight down, it was all the same. But over time the softer rock has started to be worn away um, because it's less resistant to erosion. Whereas the hard limestone is sticking out into the sea as a headland because it is much more resistant to the erosion from the waves. A wave cut platform is another erosional um, landform. You can see that we've got the cliff here. This will have been all the way across up to the um, bottom of that platform. Over time we get hydraulic action and abrasion hitting the base of the cliff and it starts to form a wave cut notch. When it does this, it means that the, the land on top of this wave cut notch is not supported anymore so it's going to start to fall down um, and crumble. This is what we've got at the bottom of this picture here where we've got the platform before we get to the sea. Well, that's all the material from the top of the cliff that's fallen down. This process is going to keep happening over and over again with the wave cut notch being created, the land becoming unstable and falling into the sea and creating a wave cut platform. This is the potential diagram you could draw in your exam. So you can see you've got the wave cut notch at the base of the um, cliff. The land on top of it isn't supported so it collapses into the sea forming the wave cut platform. Again when you've got hydraulic action and abrasion hitting the base of the cliff at high tide it's going to create a wave cut notch. The top of the cliff is going to fall into the sea and it's going to create a wave cut platform. This is known as cliff retreat and it forms um, a wave cut platform. Arches, stacks and stumps. This is when you have a headland sticking out into the sea, so it's really hard resistant rock. In this case we've got limestone. Um, and it's when the waves are making a fault line in the hard rock um, through hydraulic action and abrasion. Over time this fault line or unstable rock is going to start to become bigger. We're going to get a cave. And eventually it will work its way all the way through the cave so that we get an arch. Now the problem we have is that when we've got this arch, the land on top of it isn't supported anymore, so it collapses into the sea, leaving us with a stack. Now the stack is an, ex an example of this is um, Old Harry in, on the Dorset coast, 
and next to the stack we have a stump and that's being created because um, the bottom of the stack has been eroded and eventually it will fall over because it's unstable. An example of a stump is Old Harry's Wife also in Dorset Coast. When you're labelling a diagram like this in your exam, you need to make sure that you're saying that it's caused by process of erosion like hydraulic action and abrasion. Looking then at constructive coastlines, so so far we've looked at what happens at de with destructive waves, the process of erosion. Now we're going to have a look at constructive waves and what happens because of deposition. So you can see here we've got longshore drift. This is when the waves come into the coastline at the direction of the prevailing wind. We've got more swash than backwash. The swash comes in at about 30 degrees, depending on the direction of the prevailing wind, and it always goes back at 90 degrees because of gravity. This process goes, keeps happening over and over again, so it moves materials from one side of the beach to the other side of the beach. Now this is fine until we find that there's no sand left at one side of the beach anymore, so that means that the sea is able to um, get to the cliff much more easily, and therefore it's much easier for it to erode up. This is an example um, of what happens once the longshore drift continues past the end of the coastline. So you can see we've got deposition here, which has started to build up new land after the coastline. So this is called a spit. You can see in the area between the spit and the land, we've got um, an area of shallow land where we get um, salt marshes forming. So you can see better in this diagram here, you can see the swash and backwash happening on the left hand side of the diagram so the backwash is always at 90 degrees it's been labelled to show the direction longshore drift is travelling in we can see the spit is starting to get curved ends um, and that is because the direction of the wind has changed so the um, waves are coming at a slightly different angle and deposited the material in a different way behind the spit and between the land you can see a salt marsh has been formed where we've got very shallow and calm waters the spit's not going to stay like this forever. If we've got a storm, it might break through um, part of the spit, so then it might um, build up again in a slightly different way over time. A tombolo forms in exactly the same way, it's by longshore drift, but instead of just sticking out into the sea by itself, it joins the mainland to an island. There are different ways we can manage coastal erosion. Um, the first is hard engineering, which is generally quite expensive and it's quite intrusive on the natural environment. It might impact on the amount of tourists visiting an area. The examples are sea walls, rock groins, breakwaters, revetments, rock armour or wooden groins. Soft engineering, on the other hand, um, is not quite as effective um, and it has less noticeable effect. However, it's much more working with the natural environment to ensure that we're not making too much of an intrusion. An example of it might be beach nourishment. So if we have a look at sea walls first of all, we can see that they are quite expensive at £5,000 per metre, but they do last about 100 years, so it will last for quite a long time. Rock armour on the other hand costs £1,000 per cubic metre and lasts for about 120 years. <coughs> the problem with the rock armour is that there is holes between the rocks, so it's quite possible for the water to get in between them and start to erode them slowly. Wooden groins versus rock groins. Well, wooden groins cost £1,000 per metre and they only last about 30 to 40 years. You can see in the photograph that they're starting to get a little bit worn away with um, tourists perhaps standing on them and the sea starting to wear them away. Rock groins, however, um, they cost £1,000 per cubic metre and last about 100 years, so they're slightly more effective. The final ones we've got, these are soft engineering me methods. We've got beach management which is when we are replacing the material that's been removed. So if longshore drift has happened and one end of the coastline is left with not very much sand, beach management would mean using a digger to take the sand that's been moved by the sea during that day or that week back to the other end of the beach so that it can protect the um, cliff face behind it. And another way is by managed retreat. This is allowing some areas of the coast um, to flood naturally and to erode naturally so it protects other areas of the coast. And the final thing we can do is to do nothing. It is a natural process and when we start to put in methods to reduce erosion in one place, it's likely that we'll cause problems somewhere else.